Hello my friends, welcome back to part two of this beautiful sunset. Isn't this looking quite nice, I think, so far? Um, we're going to crack on and work away on these reflections, nice, strong, rich reflections. I hope you're getting to grips with this. I hope you're trying it. Um, what I would say to you is maybe just try and simplify it yourself. If you find this a little bit complicated with all the different colours and stuff, you could just try to simplify it, okay? Um, you know, a bit of yellow, a bit of pink, a bit of blue, and just get a grab a palette knife and just scrape on some clouds and soften them out. That would look just as nice, okay? Um, I probably went into a little bit more detail on this. I could go into a lot more detail, but for the sake of these tutorials and helping the amateurs and beginners, I just kind of try to keep it as simple as I can um, while trying to create a nice painting as well at the same time. So if you're finding this a little bit difficult, just leave out some colours and some techniques. Uh, but you know you could follow broadly what I was doing in part one okay so let's crack on um, with a couple of mountains and maybe I might just add a little bit of land in on the horizon line and then we'll go on and do our reflections okay so thank you so much for joining me and uh, let's have some fun don't go anywhere okay my friends I put the reference photograph up there for you to, this time and I'm going to take just any small brush any kind of a medium sized brush and just give it a quick clean I'm just going to put a little bit of land across here just to separate the horizon just a little. I will leave the center, okay? So, again, now unfortunately you can't see my palette, um, which is a shame. I would love to be able to show you my palette, but if I put my palette on this screen, you'll have the reference photograph and then the palette up here, perhaps. Um, it would block out most of the painting, so it's quite difficult. Now, if I zoom right back and show you my palette, then you're not going to see the details. <clears throat> Do you understand what I mean? So that's the trouble with painting bigger canvases, and that's why I don't paint so many tutorials on big canvases. Um, it's just impossible to get everything in there. Now, I'm just going to take a little burnt umber and a little black. Let me just fix my chair here now. little burnt umber, a little black, and a little magenta, okay? I'm going for a very pinky black, okay? Kind of a warm, pinky, blacky color. I'm just going to take that. I have a little turpentine in this as well, by the way. Make sure I've all my paint off of this brush here now. I'm just going to take that and put a little. And you can see the way that pink, you see the way the pinky colour in that just kind of softens into the background. It really helps, doesn't it? Now you can use a small brush for this as well, if you like. But because this is such a nice canvas, you see the way it's kind of, disappearing into the back background it kind of just loses itself in the grain of the canvas i love that that's what i love about these can this, this type of canvas okay i'm just going to go that far now what i want to do just with my finger i'm just going to soften into the horizon there okay just kind of drag the paint slightly with your finger and just leave it soften clean my finger again obviously go up to the other side and let's do the same here. Let's make this a little bit different. Look, we have perhaps some buildings and all that kind of thing over on this side, on the shoreline. So we could just, just create a bit of interest, really. Like that, like so. Take a bit more of that. And go up a little bit higher. And what I'm going to do then is just take maybe some phthalo blue into that with some magenta, okay? Going for like a deep purpley colour. And we can create the impression of some buildings just by popping a couple of little strokes in there, you see? A couple of brush strokes. It could be anything, couldn't it? It could be some trees, one or two buildings, stuff like that. And finally, I'll just take a little black and just pop a little bit of black in just towards the bottom, okay? Just dab it around, really. That's kind of what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm just dabbing it around, creating little points of interest. You see that? Just off in the distance. Now, again, I'm going to just very lightly drag this into the horizon line color, just to let it sort of disappear off into the distance, you see? Just a little. Now, we could go one step further and take a small pointy brush, and we could just add a couple of small suggestions of could be chimney tops or you know it could be a bit of lamp posts or anything like that look just one or two 
just to suggest some little bits and pieces going on up in the distance. You see, it was just one or two small lines, but that does make all the difference, I think. Just adds a little touch of interest. Okay, let's take off the masking tape. Look at that lovely clean line. I love doing that. It's so satisfying, isn't it? And reflections, okay? We have a lot to do here in reflections. When I say a lot, it's just a big area, okay? We don't have a huge amount of work on this, but it's just a big enough area. So I'm just going to take a little touch of linseed oil again. And I'm going to just dampen very lightly across this, okay? With some linseed oil and some tissue paper. Look, just a little, you see it? Let's pop that along. It doesn't matter if you don't reach every piece of the grain um, because the paint will catch this and kind of help bring it along as well. But it's just so I can get some nice soft blending colours across there. That's all. That's the only reason for it really, okay? Let's just pop a little bit of this on. Um, if you don't have linseed oil to hand, just use some regular thinners, okay? A little bit of turpentine will do just fine as well but that will maybe soak in quicker. So that's why I like to use linseed oil. It sits longer on the canvas without soaking in and drying into the canvas. And it just gives you that bit more time. Just here and there, that's fine. That's absolutely grand, now that'll do. I'm just gonna rub off some of the tissue on this. I get a clean piece of tissue and just rub off some of that, just scrape the cross and take that off. Just so it doesn't show later in the paint. Okay, that's good. Let's crack on. <clears throat> Big brush, okay. Um, I gave it a good clean, it's not spotless, but there's a tiny bit of, maybe a tiny touch of blue here and there in the brush, but that's fine. Let's mix up some nice colors. Um, I'm gonna go with a kind of a warmy brown sort of a colour first, okay? Across the top. So I'm going to dampen this. I'm just going to make sure my camera is still recording. And I'm going to take some burnt sienna, some magenta, and I'm going to mix a fair bit of this now, okay? A nice bit of this, because I don't want to keep reloading my brush every two seconds. So I'm going to mix a nice amount of this. Burnt umber, magenta, and maybe a touch of black. The touch of black, you see the way it's kind of a bit of a blacky brown kind of coming into the painting here and there. Let me just take a look now. If you find it's too rich, again, just take a little touch of black. And I am taking just the tiniest amount of thinners in this as well. So a little black, a little magenta. And let's just go along, let's drag that across. Now, don't worry if you think it's too dark. I'll be putting light colours through this later on, okay? I'll just go as far as there. I don't want to go too far into the yellow either. I right, come over here. You see we have a nice dark patch over here, don't we? And you can see how that linseed oil is helping. And it's a very thin coat as well. You can see the white grain behind that paint. It's a very light, thin coat. I'm going to mix some purple. I'm going to take some phthalo blue. Magenta and maybe a touch of cadmium red just to warm it, perhaps just a bit. So I've a deep pinky kind of a purple color look. Let's come along there, go right up to that line, okay? As close as you can, it doesn't have to be perfect. Even if you leave a slightly white line there, that's absolutely fine as well. That could act as a highlight. coming down now as it comes down i'm going to just start adding more pink into this so let me just grab some magenta for my palette so what i'm doing basically is just kind of filling in the darker shades first and then i start putting in the light shades around the center so a bit more magenta now in that and a little bit more cadmium red as well so i'm going slightly on the warm side now again you see You can see it kind of goes to a pink and then there's a bit of a purple in there as well, a soft purple. So let me pick up some phthalo blue and then a little white. So look, a little bit of phthalo blue, a bit of white into that mix. So 
Tar för där det. Remember, I'm not going too far over, okay? A little bit more of that, a little bit of white in there. And let me have a look now and see how we're doing. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to start putting in pinks. Okay, so I've cleaned this brush just very kind of quickly. And I'm going to take some magenta and some cadmium red with some white. That's giving me a nice soft kind of a pinkish color. Then take some Naples yellow into that. And that warms the pink up. Gives you a nice warm kind of a pink, you see? A nice warmish pink. And we'll start softening that into this lovely purpley color. Again, I'm not going too close to the middle. Very gently just drag that color across. Softening it in. You can see I'm kind of creating little sections of that color. Now what I'm going to do next is just really take some Naples yellow, a lot of Naples yellow. So I'm taking loads of Naples yellow and plenty of magenta. Okay, some cadmium red and just lots of lots of that color. Okay, Let's go over here. It's off now. It's a bit pink, isn't it? It's a little bit pink. Let's try a touch of cadmium yellow in that just a little touch now my camera is moving away there is it i think it is because my camera mount is kind of touching my easel here beside me for my palette so i'm just going to move my palette back ever so slightly back out of the way that should stop the shaking i do apologize there was quite a bit of shaking going on there now taking this warm color with some naples yellow you see that and a little cadmium yellow pop that in i have to get rid of that pink now there's a lot of pink on that isn't there so more naples yellow little white and a touch perhaps of cadmium red just put that nice soft yellowy hue in there soften that right down <clears throat> And what it's about really is just, I suppose, putting in sections of colour here and there and then just softening it together. That's probably the easiest way of describing what I'm doing, okay? Now again, don't worry about all the dark lines and all that kind of stuff going through. We'll add those very soon. I'm just kind of filling in the background colour first, okay? Now again some magenta naples yellow and i've been very sparingly with the magenta now in this okay i've been very very spare lots and lots of naples yellow go up there we'll pop in our very rich yellows then very soon okay and let's just soften that across we have lots of rich yellows and oranges going through this as well don't we so, now, I have that kind of pretty much filled in, don't I? Let me have a look. Okay. It probably looks a little bit soft on camera, but the colours are slightly richer from here than they would be on camera, okay? Um, that's just, I suppose, the way the camera is. It's not really increased in saturation. When I'm editing this now, I will adjust the saturation to get the true colours, okay? And the video so you're probably watching right now the proper colors it should be um okay let's have a look now see what we're doing here i'm going to hmm i'm going to move to a smaller brush okay give my smaller brush just a quick clean there i'm going to start popping in lots of these rich oranges and yellows all right so i'm going to start by taking some cadmium yellow pale and a little touch of burn cyanide that gives you this sort of warm color you see that let's just pop this across now you need to be very careful here because 
if you bring all yellow over to this purpley color you'll end up with a kind of a muddy greeny hue okay so when you're coming across you need to add a nice amount of red see that so bring a little bit of red and that will then soften in much nicer into that purpley color okay and let's just continue on softening this across and down so now we're just kind of starting to put in our nice rich colors okay i cleaned my brush i'm taking some cadmium yellow and a little touch of magenta that will give me a nice rich orangey a kind of a pinky orangey color i'm going to take that pinky orangey color and i'm just going to kind of start softening it in here and there i go up to my horizon line just as close as i can and again i'm taking more magenta into that mix and then popping a little you see the way now it's kind of gone pinky and it's not going muddy because i have a lot more magenta in this color magenta with cadmium yellow i'm just going to kind of soften it across here and there it does give you a really lovely rich orange color doesn't it I'm just going to scrape it along here look because this canvas grain is kind of a rough grain it's not very very smooth so i'm just going to scrape it to get it up to the horizon line just a little you may just have a soft smooth canvas you can get this line quite easily so let me have a look now we're coming along nicely now aren't we i'm going to get a nice rich orange in i'm going to take some cadmium yellow again and some magenta so i'm just taking my time now mixing these two colors because you need to get this hue nice just a right shade okay so magenta with cadmium yellow there's a bit more magenta in this that gives you the kind of rich orangey warm browny color you see that lovely color actually we had this kind of color just around the middle here there's a very rich orangey color coming into the scene and all of these are only subtle little changes i'm putting in but they will make a difference okay i'm going to start putting in some of the darker sections of cloud coming in down here you see those um it's the blue reflecting in the sky so it's not the clouds reflecting in the sky it's the blue reflecting it's not the clouds reflecting onto the water it's the dark blues reflecting onto the water you see it looks like a dark kind of a it's like a dark mauvey plummy kind of a color so i'm going to try and get that let's take some magenta with a little phthalo blue and plenty of cadmium red okay it's a very strong color but it's a very dull you can see it's a very dull it's almost like a dark gray almost but i'm going to make it kind of a bluey plum all right because to reflect that blue sky i'm going to make it out of a bluey plum color so i'm just going to come up and go like this first okay then i go sideways and i'm going to soften it in and leave a sort of fizzle out like that you see just leave a fizzle out then we have another one here don't we let's pop that in don't be afraid to don't be afraid to have, just have a bit of fun with this all right and it disappears in you see that just leave it a little wiggle give it a little wiggle leave it disappear in and the thing about these is as they come kind of closer to the center of the painting to get warmer don't they so what i'm going to do is just start adding some burnt sienna with cadmium red to that mix 
and just give it a little warm hint here and there now don't worry too much we're going to be softening all of this out with the soft blender brush later okay so look you don't have to get this all perfect now I'm going to make another mix of phthalo blue magenta and cadmium red I'm going to come over here and just add a little bit of darker shading to this as well, coming up at a slight angle. Now, the, what you want to kind of focus on here is, and I'm going to try and explain to this to you as easy as I can. Um, you see the way the sky comes in at both angles, like an angle like this. Okay. What you want to do then is replicate that in the reflection. So the reflections will kind of come out at an angle like this. You see. That's what I find creates the perspective, especially in a reflection. Okay, that kind of that, that's what I find creates that perspective. And look, just keep it simple. Now, in the middle here, I'm going to go with a kind of slightly warmer color. I've added some cadmium red and burnt sienna. And this is more of a ready brown kind of a shade. And I'm going to just pop this in here and there. Look like that going up to the center and disappearing. Just assimilate the kind of deepness of those clouds in there. And you can even add a little bit over here as well. Now I'm gonna take a touch of black and I'm gonna add a touch of black in over here, just to deepen those ones just that little bit just at the bottom okay little touch of black because they are quite kind of dark really and maybe a hint of phthalo blue as well And I'm going to darken this side as well. I'm going to take some phthalo blue with some magenta and some black. So I'm going very dark over here as well. Nice rich dark colour look. There may be a little bit more blue in this, but that's fine. Just want to create that deep colour on the side over here. And even, I'll just take a little bit of black as well. Awful little bit of black in there. Okay, now I'm just going to sit back for a moment, take a look. Because you need to sit back and look. Always sit back and look, okay? Just remember that. Okay, I'm going to just clean this brush. All right, I need to give my brush a good clean and I need some more thinners. So let me just get some of my trusty thinners here. Turpentine with a little linseed oil added. That's my tinners, and I'm also going to take a sup of coffee. I do apologize. My coffee is going cold. So now look, we're going well. The next thing really is to suggest some cloud. Okay, I'm going to take a warm color for those clouds. Take some white. I'm going to take lots of Naples yellow, a little cadmium yellow. And then maybe a hint of um, cadmium red. So Naples yellow, cadmium red, and a hint of white, okay? Gives you this sort of creamy colour, you see that? Maybe even a bit more cadmium red. They seem to be slightly more on the pinky side, don't they? What I'm going to do for these is just drag down like that. Look here and there. That's going to give a nice little reflection there later. Okay, the suggestion of a reflection from a cloud. I'll put a little bit of that in here as well. A little dab here and there. And a little bit around here. You see, I'm just suggesting. That's all. By pulling them down like this, you're increasing 
the reflection the impression of the reflection okay you're just kind of increasing it slightly pop a little bit around here and there so you can see everything sort of falls down doesn't it okay so i'll stop there now what i'm going to do is take my fan brush take my soft fan brush hope it's clean and i'm just going to start pulling these down okay pulling all of this down and you see what that's doing that's creating a sort of an elongated reflection from the clouds go along over everything i'll start with the lights just go over all my lights first so i don't contaminate my brush too much i'm going to flick up and down up and down look and then go over your clouds that you put in these dark clouds softening all these up and down up and down you can flick it up and then you can flick it down so you can see now what that's doing it's creating this wonderful reflection or an impression of the reflection in the water you see that isn't that just lovely you see how easy this was just put in all your colors take your fan brush and put it up and down like that and that just gives you the most wonderful feeling of a reflection i really love doing that now i'm just going to give my fan brush a quick clean and i'm then going to just go across very gently look barely touching that canvas just soften them very slightly outwards left to right and that even gives a nicer reflection again doesn't it okay let's stop let's stop and take a look oh, i'm quite happy with that <clears throat> the next thing i'm going to do is create some strong reflections over here because i can see some nice strong reflections on this side over here you see those coming into the water what i'm simply going to do is take some dark color i'm going to take some phthalo blue some black and some magenta okay and there's a lot of black in this i'm just going to go over here with that color and i'm going to just sort of suggest this land in a reflection you see that's just kind of dragging it downwards here and there okay just like that and i'm then going to put that away so we're going nicely now aren't we very nicely i'm going to start putting in rich yellows along the middle here so i'm going to take a new flat brush just a clean one really I'm going to start putting in some very rich color in the middle here so i just need to grab some clean cadmium yellow for my palette okay because it's a good idea to keep your colors clean on your palette as well um if they're starting to get muddy and all that kind of thing scrape them off and put fresh color on your palette because otherwise you'll end up with lots of different shades that you don't want i'm going to take some cadmium yellow tiny touch of turpentine just to soften that because it's a very thick color that cadmium yellow cadmium yellow and a little um cadmium red okay it's a very rich i have a very very rich color here now okay touch of cadmium yellow and a touch of cadmium red now using that i'm just going to go up and i'm just going to start pulling in little lines of that color coming into the painting there's a lot of it just around the center here i'll take a touch of burnt sienna actually as well i to just soften them out i just really want to start building up the yellows in the middle okay go across my horizon line with this just over there 
Now I'll clean my brush again. And I'm going to take some. Hmm. I could even use a palette knife as well at this stage, come to think of it. I think I'll use a palette knife. I'm going to grab a palette knife. Okay. Now we have kind of this yellowy color in the middle. First of all, let me just soften. Let me just soften it down words firstly okay let's just try and soften it back in ever so slightly to the painting the palette knife is next let's have some fun with our palette knife all right let's get i'm going to start with a kind of a light pinky color i'm going to take some white and a little cadmium red and some naples yellow on my palette knife I can see a beautiful colour up there. On the very top of the horizon line, there's a beautiful, warm, kind of a pinky colour going across the horizon line. Um, it's a wonderful colour. It just separates the sky from the land, I think, up there. So I'm just going to take a nice pink, you see that? A warm pink, and I'm just going to go across the horizon line with that warm colour. It just separates the sky up there. And I want to keep going. And we just start adding then a little bit of detail with this method, okay? Here and there. Um, we could go across over to this side as well, just slightly. Then what I'm going to do is take some deep blue for over here. Some phthalo blue with a little white. Okay. I'm going to make a nice deep blue, rich, rich blue. I'm just giving it a mix here now with my palette knife, all right? See that bit of a blue we have? Even darker again. Let's go darker. I'm going to just pop a little touch of blue over here. Now you see instantly how that just catches your eye, doesn't it? That bit of blue over there. It really catches the eye. I'm just going to put that in over here. And then create just a few little reflections through that. Or sorry, a few little ripples, rather, through that little reflection there. You see that? And this is really just adding a bit of interest off of the distance over there. I know it's probably not on the reference photograph, not as pronounced anyway, but I feel it just adds a little something. Now, maybe go a bit darker. I think that's maybe a bit bright, isn't it? Let's go a bit darker with that. Well, darker blue. Now we can also add some roughness to the water. Let me just fix this here. Um, we can add a little roughness to the water down here as well. If we take some black and some burnt umber, we can add a little suggestion, maybe a touch of cadmium red. Um, we can just add a little suggestion of some rough stuff going through the water here. It could be just some um, you know, bits of kind of, what would you say, bits of stuff on top of the water, do you understand? So we could just add a little bit of that around here. Coming into the painting at an angle, you see that? And again, it's just really to suggest that there's Stuff on top of the water here and there. Just dab it along with your knife. So it look it's starting to sort of come together, isn't it? 
I know it's slow, it takes a bit of time, but it's starting. It's just ever so slightly starting to come together. Just soften some of this away. And you could just very gently soften some of this away as well, if you want. Again, that canvas grain helps with this kind of thing. Um, I'm going to just start bringing in some darks across here. Very light darks, okay? I'm going to take some burnt umber because we need to break up these kind of orangey colors slightly. I'm going to take some, some burnt cyanide, some burnt umber, and some magenta in that, okay? Perhaps a touch of white. And this would really help now just break up the water, just to break it up. That's all I want to do. I hope now you're following this along okay. I hope I'm not going too quickly for you. If I am, I apologize. I really do. Um, but I, I have this habit of working quickly when I'm enjoying something. It might not be the best quality to have, but I'm just going to go along here and add a little bit of dark color to my palette knife. Just to suggest maybe perhaps some shallow water and stuff like that off in the distance. Okay, you understand what I mean? Maybe take a hint of black as well. To darken it ever so slightly. And I'll do the same over here. You see that? Just kind of dragging it across. over there now I'm going to darken it on this side with some black and magenta you see how now that's just kind of creating the sense of um, very shallow waters over there off in the distance it creates the impression of a very shallow lake okay the next thing I need to do and this is the exciting bit the Sun the reflection from the Sun now that may be a bit brighter over there don't you think I think I'll just darken that a little bit over there I'll go over this Now, is that a bit better? I think so. Let's start creating our lovely reflection from the sun. This very intense reflection. I'm going to go first with some cadmium yellow and a touch of burnt cyan. Eh? I'm using my palette knife again. Okay, this lovely rich colour, you see that? I'm going to just start pulling it in and maybe even just dragging it down. Let's just go along here like this. And just take your time with this, okay? Take your time. There's no rush whatsoever. I'm just dragging some cadmium yellow around here and there. Then I'm going to go to some cadmium yellow with white. And with a nice little lip of that on your palette knife, I'm just going to cut across. Under some of that dark. Do the same thing again. Cadmium yellow with some white. And just around here and there, pop a little of that rich colour, nice rich bright colour in. 
as it comes down then it just starts changing slightly doesn't it i'm going to go to a warmer shade a little cadmium yellow with some cadmium red that bringing a little warmer shade of it in just here and there look and i'm just sort of wiggling it through the reflection here and there as well just to break it up okay you can if you like now kind of soften all of this together if you like i could maybe just soften a little bit of it out okay just that little just a little touch here and there but really you don't have to go absolutely crazy with this the next thing i want to do is really just get a very strong almost white touch of a reflection here and there so i'm going to take some titanium white with some cadmium yellow okay and it's probably 90 percent white in this i just want to get plenty of this on my palette knife and i'm just going to go in around the center where the sun is sort of coming in like that okay just a little just a little touch of it and you could even go sideways like this okay and then you could soften this with your soft brush sideways soften it outwards ever so gently look just creating little tiny ripples in the paint Yeah. how's that doesn't that look nice i think that looks nice i'm quite happy with this so far now look we could leave it at that if you're happy enough with that you could simply just leave it at that um i feel i need to put in a slightly warmer color just around there a nice rich warm orangey sort of a color okay i'm just going to pop a little bit of it in cadmium red and some cadmium yellow I feel it just needs a little touch of a lift around there. Just a little bit of a lift. Okay, I'm not going to go crazy. But just to deepen that colour around the centre of the painting here, I feel it will help. Much more cadmium red cadmium yellow and cadmium red are just really wonderful colors to use for sunsets like this and what i'm going to do lastly i think just to finish it off i'm going to take my fan brush and i'm just going to pull some of these down like this okay the same over here just one or two here and there and then go across them gently i'm going to stand back and take a look Now, okay, we could perhaps strengthen some of the darks down here, make more of an impact. I think that might be a good idea. I think I'll try. Let's take some black, phthalo blue and some magenta. I think they need a bit of deepening down there a little 
Yeah, I think that's helping, isn't it? Perhaps a little bit more of the cyanide color along there. So you see, just adding little touches can make a difference. Then we just simply go over these like that. Pull them down again. And you can flick them upwards as well as not to contaminate your painting higher up. Just flick them up and flick them down. And then softly again, go across them. And that's just giving them a little bit more form and pronouncing the color just a little bit, okay? Now my friends, I don't feel the need to continue on with this. I do see a bit of a greeny color going on there, so I'm going to try and fix this. I'm just gonna go over that because I'm not happy with that at all. Just with my palette knife there. Just gonna cover that kind of a dark line there with some orange. That will help. I'm thinking, what about a boat? Can we pop in a suggestion of one or two little boats off in the distance? How about that? Wouldn't that be nice? We could. Let's pop in the suggestion of um, a couple of sails or something like that why not i think that will just add a little interest into the painting way off in the distance look and it's really just a tiniest little suggestion that's all Does that help? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But it's a little tiny bit of interest in the painting. It's not, not too bad, is it? Can add as much or as little as you want. Maybe suggestion of reflection. Just on one or two of the bigger ones. Okay, it's a small little suggestion, but I think it helps. I do think it helps. And lastly, I think it does need a little bird. Um, a small little silhouette of a black bird just kind of coming across the sky. So I go on this side, up here, and let me see now. Let me just use my arm. A little bird here. Coming across the sky. Could be a silhouette of a seagull or something like that. In a night, in kind of an evening sky. And my friends, I think that's it. I don't want to bore you anymore with any more of this. So I'm just going to pop my name down here. A little bit of white paint. That's Conway. And that's it. I'm calling it finished, my friends. I hope you've liked it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Look, I could do a bit more work on some of the clothes and that kind of thing. Um, I could use a palette knife for that, perhaps. Just add a little bit more texture into this side here. Perhaps you could. Um, look, we could try it as we're here. I know you would probably like to see that. So, okay, come on. Let's 
grab a little white and a bit of pink and all that and let's just see if we can add a little texture down here let's try it let's just drag pat knife like that look how about that do you think that's helping You know, it's worth a try, isn't it? Here and there. Maybe it's worth a try, maybe not. But you'll never know until you try, will you? If I mess up the painting, look, it's all right. It's not the end of the world. I can fix it. Now, I'll just soften that with my fan brush again. And then just go gently across it, softening those knife strokes away. Just softening very gently. Now, how's that? That adds a little bit to it, doesn't it? Thank you so much, my friends, for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have enjoyed this. Let me just fix my camera here. Um, I certainly have enjoyed this immensely. I have to say I'm very proud with what I've achieved. That's a lovely painting. I'm just gonna paint around the sides of this now just to soften some of those colors back around the edges. Um, but then, look, it's pretty much finished. Thank you so much for joining me. I've enjoyed it. I will stick a frame around it and see if somebody would like to sand their wall. I think so. Thank you very, very much for joining me today and subscribing. If you haven't done so, please do. You're missing so much um, painting and just nice, relaxed atmosphere. I like to be nice and relaxed and not to be too kind of intricate and formal and all that kind of thing. You know, I kind of, I imagine you're just sitting next to me with a cup of coffee painting along with me, okay? That's the way I like to do things. So I'll see you very soon, my friends. Thank you so much and um, happy painting. And try to keep it simple, okay? I'll see you later on, and God bless.